What is up, everybody? My name's Rob. I'm Chris. And today, the Pack Bros are coming to you not with packs, but slabs. We're the Slab Bros today. And we are showing you our 80 card, something like 80, I think, I'm ballparking, haul from mint grading, covering a wide variety of different sports and also TCG. We have Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, UFC, basketball, baseball, and hockey all represented. So stay tuned. You're going to see something you like. Maybe you'll see something that you laugh at us about. I don't know. There's a big mix of grading in here. We looked at some of them. We didn't look at some of them. So we're going to be learning as we go along with you guys here and seeing what we got. From my side here, I'm going to be covering everything non-Yu-Gi-Oh. This was a big Yu-Gi-Oh order. Mm -hmm. Chris put a lot of his Yu-Gi-Oh cards through. It's time to do, 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 do. Uh, this is mostly a Chris grading session. I think I have a handful of cards here represented, but nevertheless, a really, really interesting deep, deep dive into what we have and a little bit of a deep dive into how Mint grades different types of cards. I think we've learned a few things from doing this process twice now. Yep. The first batch being, I think, maybe 20 cards or so. This batch being much larger. We've learned a little bit about what cards get favored in what way maybe they're a little bit more difficult on some cards than others and by some cards i mean types of cards Yu-Gi-Oh over pokemon pokemon over ufc etc etc so mm -hmm. stay tuned and follow along uh without further ado let's get into the grades let's dive into it let's get into the grades we're going to start with hockey these three are my cards that i sent forward and the first card i sent forward was a cole caulfield ahl base card i know these cards typically when a player takes off do very well uh so i tried to cash in and, and get one graded that we pulled in one of our videos flipping it over we're going to keep the grade hidden you can take a look at the card there bringing that in close to you guys the only thing i didn't notice at the jump was it does have a soft top corner i don't know if you can see it because of the glare but that top left corner is a little bit soft and as a result i got an 8.5 on it hopefully i can get this into focus here 8.5 showing you nice close there corners at an eight that's exactly what i thought based on what i see edges 8.5 centering 9.5 nine, 9.5 five, nine, five. so i mean it could have been a nine if the corners were better maybe even a nine five but there you have it 8.5 cole caulfield coming up next i picked up a couple of these packs someone had them hidden at the back of a store uh, the, uh, the i guess a secret hobby store i'll call it and uh, i picked it up for very cheap so i gave it a shot this is a Mc, this is a mcdavid memorable moments this is from the uh, national hockey card day packs way back in 2016 and covering up the grade so there's the memorable moments card it's him on the draft stand and this card got a 9.5 super solid nine fives across the board with a nine on the edges but nevertheless a nine five mcdavid rookie type card is always a good thing to grab i'm going to hand that over to chris to sleeve it up and that one there was the bonus card this is the actual base canada rookie base of that same product in 2016 and that's what the front looks like a really nice clean looking card canada's rookies connor mcdavid and this also got a nine five except i believe it's a true nine five yeah it's nine fives across the board so a true gem mint right there for the mcdavid i'll slide that over to chris as well moving on over to baseball and after some minor technical difficulties we are back and going to recap that last card i was talking to you about a uh, much better camera angle now too we have the michael jordan baseball rookie card here rookie class as you can see on the front there collector's choice and it came in at a nine 9.5 centering nine on the edges and corners 8.5 surface that kind of surprised me i didn't see any surface flaws when i first looked at it but nevertheless a nine mint michael jordan baseball rookie card and after that you did see these similar cards in the first grading video that we did i sent some more Bo Bichette rookie cards for some reason Bo Bichette rookie cards gravitated towards me i pulled all of these i pulled all of these myself and this one here is from i believe the update series if i'm not mistaken but in any event oh sorry the holiday series so this was a series done by walmart where they do a i mean it's a walmart exclusive mega box and they put kind of christmasy theme or spin on it and you'll see the snowflakes there on the side and you know some garland wrapped around the name it is a rookie card and the tops holiday rookie of bobashek got a 9.5 nine fives across the board except for the edges that got a nine very happy with that i think bobashek's gonna be a great player for the jays for a long time and another bobashek here but this one's a little bit special this is actually a short print and i'll show you why it's kind of clever and i think this is going to be a really unique collector's item if, if bobashek does become what we think he's going to become so I'll flip it over there and as you can see it's the same background as the last one except he has candy cane arm sleeves 
And oh. that's how they represented the short print. So kind of cool. I, I like it. It's a different type of rookie card. It's not something common. They call it a rookie metallic, I guess. And it got a 9.5 grading, a gem mint 9.5. Everything was 9.5 except the quarters got a 9. So there you have a 9.5 Boba Shett Tops Holiday Metallic. I didn't even notice that when you um when we first uh, threw these. Yeah. Remember you had a you had a good chunk of these Boba Shack cards. I, I pulled them all. I don't know why he just gravitated towards me, which is I mean awesome. I'm very happy to have that problem. <laughs> yeah, take it. All right, moving on to Pokemon for our TCG followers out there. These are I'm 99% sure all Chris's. And off the top we have I don't even know which card it is. Let's find out. The Guard of War Vmax. Okay, the set that I got this from, which one was it again? Champions Path. Um, I think I probably got like two, three ETBs of Champions Path, and one of the ETBs it was Guard of War, Guard of War, Guard of War, Guard. I remember that. I remember I pulled, that. I remember like four or three of them in the same. We one. did that on video, and I was so upset, but now I'm less upset. Less upset why. because this Guard of War Secret Rare got a nine five. Yeah. Gem Mint, and it's actually kind of unfortunate because the centering got a nine. Just see if I can focus in there for you guys. The centering got a 9, and the edges and surface got 10s. So it looks like if the centering gave they gave it a 9.5, it would have got a 10 overall. But nevertheless, a 9.5 Gardevoir. Very nice. Just leave that up. Next Pokemon card we have, another gold plate. This one is a Charizard. It's a oh, Charizard yeah. V. This came from the... It's a Champions Sword and Shield Pro Champions oh, sorry, Path sorry. promo. Black Star promo card. So this came in a little plastic wrap inside the pack one came with every box it's not a rare card by any means but it is charizard and we did this card three times is how many times we graded this card three different ones the first one got a nine with an eight five edges and a nine five centering the second one got a nine five with a sub 10 on the corners and a nine five on edges and surface and the third one oh a first on the Pack Rose channel. A first for me ever. The first. First for me too. The first. Graded. 10. Pristine card the Pack Bros have ever gotten graded. I know it's not that big of a deal for most of you, but it's not easy to get 10s in grading. It's Honestly, it's it's really not. It's a very nitpicky thing. And unfortunately, it's not a true, 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 true pristine, pristine. The centering got a 9.5, but everything Point else got a 10. Off. And anything Charizard 10, the price will automatically go up. So there you have it. Oh, we, yeah. we now have the a pop rainbow of the mint Charizards. We have the mint, the gem mint, and the pristine 995 10 Congratulations, Chris, on completing your little rainbow there. You're super mint, happy about your that. Your mint rainbow. Yeah, that really uh, covers the cost of probably all the ETBs <laughs> I got off the Champions Path. But wait, there's more. In a quick follow-up to the first pristine that we received, we received, we sent in a Rayquaza Amazing Rare base from Vivid Voltage, and it also received yeah. a pristine everything again being tens except for the surface the surface they gave it a nine five i mean i don't know what more you're supposed to do when it comes out of the pack and you put it right into a top loader but there it is an amazing rare rayquaza 10 beautiful card i really like the design of the card in general and oh yeah and then you get it in a pristine and well done chris congratulations oh very happy about that also such a huge relief <laughs> for sure huge relief for those that maybe aren't so aware of mint just a very quick breakdown mint is uh, a canadian grading company which is why we use them because it's so much cheaper than sending it to the u.s um if you're familiar with beckett i know a lot of our viewers come from us consider this the canadian version of beckett that's essentially what it is they grade very strictly like just like beckett does um but it's just way more affordable for us so that's why we sent all of our stuff to mint that said the prices are coming down for uh for beckett for bgs mm -hmm. uh, i did send a handful of cars off at the toronto show in this in june this month uh, and we will expect to get those back in four to six months so stay tuned subscribe and see when those come back that is some higher end stuff I graded a couple of Mew rookies, Mario Lemieux rookies that got sent off. I graded an Austin Matthews Jumbo Young Guns that got sent off. I'm trying to think what else. It's, it's 10, 10 higher end cards that if I hit on them, I'm going to hit 
massively. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how that pans out. I wanted to send those off to BGS. But moving on to basketball, we have three cards from basketball. All are from the NBA Hoops box that Chris opened on this channel. If you haven't seen that yet, please go take a look. It it's is uh, one of our first videos, actually. One of our first videos. There you go. Uh, we have a Lamelo Ball insert. I think it's called He Got Game. I'm gonna flip it and hide the plate. We got next, not He Got Game. We got next. Lamelo Ball rookie. Lamelo has had a great uh, start to his career, and we have a nine five insert of Lamelo on the We Got Next rookie. Very solid. I'm happy with that. I think he's. Uh, I think he's gonna do very, very well in this league. There we have our. I think if he dedicates himself and really like continues to improve the way he has mm -hmm. the sky's the limit oh, but yeah. i think if the fame gets to him and i think he's one of those players that the fame could get to him he'll just always be a great player and never a legend that is one of the biggest worries that a lot of people have with a lot of these rookies that are coming in um in particular tyler hero i remember that being talked about a lot on a lot of different shows um typically well not typically but in particular excuse me with Tyler Hero, people saw a lot of his social media antics, a lot of what he would do on social media, a lot of the stuff that he would do outside of the court, and they weren't exactly fantastic things to see from such a talented rookie. A lot of people were worried that that would stray him from the path. Thankfully, he has done fairly well. Uh, unfortunately, got injured during the playoffs, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was um, playing really well. This he was too. Yeah, which I think was a starting spot, honestly. Yeah, I, I think that was a pleasant surprise for everyone because it wasn't looking too great. But yeah, that, that is one of the worries that you can have, and Lamelo Ball has avoided that thus far. But we'll see. All right, more Lamelo Ball content. This is the base rookie. I don't think there's any hiding that. Nope. There we have it, the hoops and Lamelo Ball base rookie, and it came back unfortunately at a nine uh, it looks like they gave the edges eight five i don't really understand why i can't see why it would be an eight five i mean maybe a little bit here and there but i, I thought i get at least a nine but at least it overall came back at a nine which is good because getting this card back sub nine would be a problem yeah that'd be rough to be honest that would be a difficult pill to swallow and lastly i'm actually really glad we sent this card off because i think when we sent it he wasn't I mean, he was good, but we didn't expect him to take off the way he did and have a mm -hmm. great season. But Anthony Edwards on the base rookie, we sent this off as well from NBA, NBA Hoops, and it got a very similar 9. Actually, I think it's exactly the same subgrades. So it looks like the edging on these NBA Hoops cards has had some problems. It also got an 8.5. But a 9 mint Anthony Edwards rookie is always great, especially when Anthony Edwards is one of those uh, players who I think has only got up to go. Lastly, should we say should i give this one to you too for your last card no we can do it now let's all right stick to the, well, Lastly, stick to the theme. as you can see from the back this is probably one of chris's biggest hits that he's ever pulled himself uh i did not split on this box and i regret it because i actually think it is the biggest hit i've ever had in my life it's quite possible uh he pulled a sean o'malley and i'm gonna do a, a make sure i'm covering this green prism signature auto all right this came from the retail box Yep, this is retail. So he pulled yep. a Sean O'Malley green prism out of a retail box. And you only get oh, one auto out of those. One auto per box. Not only that, but in the same pack, I got an Aljamain Sterling pink pulsar True. numbered out of 42. And that was before Aljamain. Uh, actually, no, I think that was right when he got the championship belt. Yep. Like his very first one with the belt. Yeah. So that pack was ridiculous. Loaded. And so there you have the, the green prism. Prism historically is a tough grade because they do have a lot of print lines and manufacturing difficulties because it's such a shiny card. So we were a bit worried sending this in, but when we looked at it kind of under a light, we felt that it was a good quality card to give a shot. Mm -hmm. And well, I'll flip it over to the back because Mint does the signature grading on the back. And off the bat, it's a 10 auto, which is amazing, obviously. Great start. Autos don't often get varied much to be honest with you i don't i've never seen an auto lower than like a nine yeah to be honest because they use one auto as a baseline and go from there so nine nine five is usually typical getting a 10 is great that means they couldn't find any discrepancies with it and the card itself got a 9.5 gem mint with one 10 subgrade on edges Unfortunately, as I mentioned with Prism, Surface got a 9. Mm -hmm. If only that Surface could have bumped up a bit and Corners and Centering bumped up a bit, we would have got possibly a 10 on this. But a 9.5 Gem Mint, Sean O'Malley, Green Prism Signature, wicked grading that you could get out of a retail box. Chris is going to definitely do well 
Uh, if yeah. he decides to flip that, yeah, you know, maybe I don't know if you're gonna, you're gonna, what do you plan on doing? You're gonna hold it for a little bit to see if he fights somebody of note, or no, you're gonna flip no. it right away. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's going up for sale. Keep your eyes open on eBay. <laughs> that is going up for sale. <laughs> not, not that I'm not expecting him to do well in his UFC career. Um, just from what I've heard and from what I've seen in his interviews, he is taking a very slow approach. Um, because the, and I actually think this is very smart. He realizes that there's not really that much of a benefit in skyrocketing up the ranks that quickly mm -hmm. due to the pay structure of the ufc even if he was to be propelled that quickly unless he were to get the championship belt he would still be restricted to that very very small pay mm -hmm. um for the most part most of his pay would be coming from fight of the night bonuses knockout of the night right. bonuses anyways regardless of so he feels he can do that so, so he can do that to lower lower end fighters i guess or middling fighters and collect his bonuses anyway yeah he's gonna collect his bonuses anyway the fights are gonna be way easier for him people are gonna love what like he's a superstar already yeah, people yeah, know yeah. his name they know who he is um so i think he's taking a very smart approach to it he also has a youtube channel he does podcasts like mm. he's very very smart with how he's going about this so um typically with this stuff the price will skyrocket if one they're like a sick rookie or two if they're a champion anything in between it's can be kind of rough unless they're like a legend that has solidified themselves in the sport mm. so that's why i'm more willing to let this go right away mm. also because um having that cash flow would be really nice to sure. get some other product sure last i checked uh something around this grade for the same kind of card is around 800 Ooh. uh canadian nice and just for for comparison the box the retail box i got it was actually a pretty good price at the time i think it was like 250 300 for the really retail box, yeah. which is pretty ridiculous for ufc prism and this was like let's say it was like a year ago so think about the hobby as it was 2021 mm -hmm. it's like pretty much like peak yeah. peak prices so yeah that was really cool awesome good um, stuff we're all done there i'm done my side i'm gonna hand it over to chris to start the Yu-Gi-Oh off let's get these over there all right there's a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh to go through guys we have to take a sip of water before we dive into this. All right. I know it's a long video, guys, but thank you for sticking with us. And if you have liked it thus far, please subscribe, like, comment. We're going to dive into the Yu-Gi-Oh! section now. Pretty much all of these are mine. We're going to start off with, I believe it's a, a Blue Eyes to start here. Hang on, let me flip it over. Yeah, it is. So this is a Blue Eyes from CT14, which is a Megaton. Pretty much my philosophy with the Yu-Gi-Oh! cards was, particularly because it's my first time sending this much, in that was my own product i really wanted to test the field see how mint graded Yu-Gi-Oh cards across the board from old to kind of old to newer cards i wanted to see how it would be um really this was more of a, an experience and a learning lesson for me rather than trying to make as much profit as possible i know like making profits really good but i wanted the experience and the knowledge from this more than anything else so you're not going to see too many crazy stuff with, with the Yu-Gi-Oh cards. There is some well, really, really some good cool stuff. Cards. Here. Really cool, cool cards. Really cool cards. Not all but, of them um, amazing grades, but yeah, there's some really cool stuff that he sent in. Yeah. So um yeah, we're just gonna dive in. This is a blue eyes from uh 2017 Megaton. Uh really cool looking card. Obviously, blue eyes and red eyes and dark magician and dark magician girl, Exodia. You're gonna be sending a lot of that stuff in because everybody likes that stuff. Limited edition card, and it received a 7.5 unfortunately what really hurts with Yu-Gi-Oh is surface surface is really really rough with Yu-Gi-Oh they are going to be looking at surface a lot um I think the front of this card was actually fairly decent but the back you can see there is hopefully that comes up on the camera heavy heavy white marks in the center there I think that's really what kind of did it in for this card but 7.5 corners 9.5 edges 9.0 centers are amazing subgrades really surface. solid it's kind of frustrating yeah, so actually the service is kind of what uh what did me in there next card we have ooh, okay chocolate magician girl i got this one out of a collection that i actually purchased through ebay <laughs> and there was pretty much all of the magician girls were in the chocolate magician girl yep. lemon magician yep. like pick a fruit there was a magician girl for it <laughs> um this was one of the ones that i found looked the best so i sent it in and it came back at a 8.5 not too great but not too bad either considering i got it out of a collection none of the cars were sleeves by the way it was really just in boxes so pretty lucky all things considered uh corners nine edges nine centering 9.5 surface eight like i said surface you kind of gotta get dinged on those uh sorry i should also mention that is from the dark side of dimensions movie pack oh is it? yeah that's cool Ooh. another blue eyes ah this is from structured deck kaiba uh unlimited Print. this is not a first edition one that would be ridiculous 
um of course blue eyes obviously going to send a lot of those in but because it's sdk that is very old i think there was only like a 2002 unlimited printing of these which means it's 20 years ago hmm. so sent that in and unfortunately they received a six so i may as well have not sent it in at all <laughs> um corners 6.5 which I, I can see top right one there pretty bad um edges 5.5 which is fair surface wasn't really expecting much there centering it's pretty darn good 9.0 um, centering is probably one of the things that you can control the most when you're sending cards and it's very very easy to see how well centered something is especially with Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon it's pretty evident whether it's centered or not that should be your benchmark for what what you want to send in. And, and there's all kinds of, is probably the second easiest thing to tell. There's all kinds of tools out there too. I know there's little centering like clear things you hold over your card and oh, yeah. tell you yeah. if your card's centered or not. All right, next one, Exodia Necros. I didn't know much about this card until I found it. I think this was also in the collection that I purchased. Mm. Um, this comes from Master Collection Volume Two. It is a limited edition card. Of course, Exodias people love them. It's from 2005, by the way. I'm actually kind of pleasantly surprised with this one because it received an 8. Exodia Necros 8. Now, I didn't know that Exodia Necros actually had a lot of desirability behind it. I thought it was just Exodia, specifically mm -hmm. Exodia, like plain old Exodia cards. Uh, but Necros has a very good market behind it, so I think this 8 will actually do pretty decently uh, on eBay. It's unfortunate that it's an 8. Would have loved to see a 9, but not too bad considering it's a 2005 card. Corners, 7.5. Edges, 8.5. Surface, 8. Centering was really solid with a 9.5. Next card. Ooh, okay. We're getting into some gold action here. <laughs> and I don't mean label. This is a 2014 premium gold first edition Wing Dragon of Raw. It looks absolutely sick. It is a first edition card. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one, and that is because... Came back at a five, an excellent five. What really, really sucks about this is like almost everything was a five except for the centering. So um, it, it's pretty unfortunate. Uh, the corners, I can see how they were fairly bad. The edges, I, I don't think the edges deserved a 5.5, but maybe, you know, if I was looking at the raw card, taking a closer look, I could probably tell. But centering was a nine. Everything else kind of sucked on that one going into the next one oh my gosh we're seeing double it's another 2014 premium gold first edition wing dragon of raw and this one did way better because it came back at an 8.5 they just don't like giving you the nines eh? you get they hate it i feel like you've gotten quite a few 8.5s yeah it's uh it's unfortunate but oh okay now you focus that's cool um this one did way better than the last one 8.5 on the corners eight on the surface nine on the edges centering was a 9.5 very very happy with that the five i'm probably just gonna uh i don't know probably auction it or yeah. crack it out of the case that that was kind of a blow but the 8.5 that one can go straight up and we are continuing the trend with another 2014 premium gold first edition card it is slight for the sky dragon probably the least popular out of the three which kind of sucks because i've always really liked slifer mm -hmm. i thought it was one of the cooler looking ones wing dragon of raw number one slifer number two obelisk number three for me personally this one very similar to uh wing dragon of raw got an 8.5 this one is 8.5 on the corners eight on the surface 8.5 on the edges and the centering was a very solid 9.5 which really helped do you want to bag the god cards at 8.5 yeah 5? those two yeah probably and we have yet another Exodia Necros, but this one is from Dark Crisis, and it is not a secret rare. It is an ultra rare. It is first edition, though. That is why I sent it in, because first edition cards from 2003, if you get a good grade on that, that could be some pretty money. Unfortunately, it's not going to be some pretty money, because it's a 5.5, <laughs> which is an excellent plus. Uh, centering, again, I think we made a very good call with the centering on these cards. Pretty much all the, all the cards we sent in centering was like an 8.5 or a 9. ironically though with that said yes it's an 8.5 or 9 but i mean centering is nothing you can control so you'd hope that one of them would get a 10 or something like that because yeah if they've all been centered at 995 that shows you how hard it is to get a 10 overall you know because if that's always going to be a 995 it's kind yeah. of challenging and um i think what we're seeing here the trend is uh mint is very very strict when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh cards uh, we seem to have a lot better luck when it comes to Pokemon and other sports. But again, like I said at the beginning, learning lesson, experience. I wanted to learn more, and I very clearly am. 
Now we're going into some Dark Magician. This is what everybody came for. This is a 2015 Yugi's Legendary deck, first edition Dark Magician Ultra Rare card. This one, I was fairly happy with this. Dark Magician came back at an 8.5. Centering, 9.5. Edges, 8.5. Corners, 9.5, which I was very, very happy with that corner grade. Surface, it's going to be a trend in these. For Yu-Gi-Oh cards, surface is very, very difficult to get a high grade on. That being said, an eight on a surface, pretty good, pretty darn good for Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So I'm happy with that one. That and you got to imagine some of these, some of these older cards. Quite honestly, probably have been played with. You know, b yeah. back in 2015, I don't think people were necessarily collecting Yu-Gi-Oh cards to sell or grade or flip or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So I think probably a lot of these were played with, and that's why an eight surface is actually probably a pretty good situation to be. Yeah. In. All right, I remember this one. <laughs> I know this one very well. A 2002 20-year-old collectible tin limited edition. Uh, I believe it was a battle party tin is what it was called specifically, I think. Dark Magician Seeker Rare. This is one of the most sought-after Dark Magicians that you can find in Yu-Gi-Oh, period. This is one of the rarest ones that you can find in a good condition. That's why I sent it in. I saw this card. I knew it wasn't going to be tip-top condition. This was 100% a gamble. I was like, maybe I can find the one guy at Mint that's just having a grand old day. <laughs> and he's like, just handing out eights, handing out nines. Unfortunately, this one is probably going to be the worst grade of all. It came back at a four. So uh, that hurts a lot. Centering, damn near a 10. Centering 9.5. It was edges, corners, and surface. Again, <laughs> surface. Else. It was everything else. And the one thing that's consistent here, everything else being bad, surface was still the worst. Yep. Out of 3.5. So there's maybe a little lesson for you guys. If you find stuff that is this old and it's a dark magician or it's a blue eyes, just be very cautious if you send it in. Thankfully, the price for sending in cards for mint is fairly low, so it's not actually a huge hit. I think it was maybe like I think we dropped it down to like 12, 14 bucks it was a pop. About 15 bucks after tax Canadian. Yeah, which is pretty darn good for a grading submission. Um so not taking a huge hit there. If I sent that to PSA, I would have been Yeah, that would have been, been PSA. But I don't think it would have. Yeah, no, it it'd be so expensive. Diving back into some blue eyes. This is one of my favorite looking blue eyes cards. This looks so cool and this also comes from the dark side of dimensions movie pack it is a limited edition gold blue eyes white dragon super shiny super sick Unfortunately, super blue eyes super blue eyes super white dragon so white big dragon unfortunately it's not a super grade but it's a decent grade it's a 7.5 we got 8.5 on the corners nine on the edges nine on the centering surface again 6.5 which seems to be the trend uh yeah we, we, we won't sleep that one he can stay there next one Dark Magician of Chaos. This is a 2015 card. So another trend that we're seeing here, the more current it is, generally speaking, the better grade you're going to get because the less play it's been through, the less hands it's gone through, the better condition it's in. Dark Magician of Chaos. This is from Yugi's Legendary Deck, first edition. We got an 8.5, which I'm pretty happy with. Uh, corners, 9, which is really solid. Edges, 9. Centering, 9.5. And the theme continues. Surface was an 8. Next card. We have another Dark Magician. This one looks awesome. Everything from this 2017 Dark Side of Dimensions movie pack, the designs of these cards is just phenomenal. I love them so much. This one is a limited edition movie pack. We got not a fantastic grade, but considering it's Dark Magician, this is pretty darn good. We got an eight. Corners 9.5, which I think was actually probably the best That's a really good grade grading that for I've yep. gotten. Uh, edge is 9, centering 9.5. The surface really killed us here. If this surface was like an 8, I think this would have been bumped up to an 8.5 at least, possibly a 9. Are yeah. you seeing a discrepancy? No, I'm just... No. Uh, the other Dark Magician you have here is a 9.5 corners, 8.5, 9.5, and an 8. So, yeah, you probably, yeah, so you probably would have been like a 9.5, 9. 9. Um, but still, Dark Magician out of 8. It's going to sell. It's going to do well. I'm happy with that. Next one, we have another Dark Magician. I believe these ones I actually purchased um voluntarily on ebay this, this didn't come from a pack it didn't come from a collection this was a specific a card purchase that i was buying too great and i guess it kind of paid off because this 2010 legendary collection limited edition dark magician came back at an 8.5 and uh 8.5 corners 8.5 surface nine edges 9.5 centering good so that one will be a sleeve solid oh <laughs> okay ill blood I don't, I don't get this card. I don't either. 
but this one came in that big collection that I purchased. And I had no idea what ill blood was until I looked it up on eBay. And this came back at like 180 bucks raw. Yeah. Not graded, just a raw card. And I was like, did I just strike gold? Like, well, what is this card? Turns out it's from actually a pretty old set from 2007, Tactical Evolution. Um, and this is a set that a lot of collectors will probably know very well, but a lot of other players may not. I still am not too sure why ill blood is so sought after but it looks creepy it looks really weird it came back at a 7.5 grade corners 9.5 edges 9 centering 9.5 and again that surface absolutely killed me with a 6.5 which is unfortunate uh, if that was at a 7.5 we're probably looking at an 8.5 grade that being said there is next to like no graded ill bloods out there the population is extremely slim from all grading services mint bgs cgc uh psa like all of them like this abc is, xyz yeah w24 pick letters and the, the, there's few of them r2d2 wd40 matter. wwe i mean it's everything in between xfl <laughs> um so yeah even though the grade is not great because it's such a low pop I still think that's actually pretty, pretty solid. So we're, we're going to sleeve that one. See which master. Red Eyes B Dragon. This is not Black Dragon. This is B Dragon. There's a difference. This comes from the Shonen Jump magazine promo. I used to take those out from the library. I didn't know we had them here. Yeah, we did. They, they make them in. Is that at a Scholastic? Scholastic no, like at, the li like at the library. Like legit library. Like that's at the funny. library. There were no cards in it by then, but... <laughs> So this is a very old card, 2003, so about 19 years ago. I really wasn't expecting much out of this card, and I didn't get much back. Came back at a 7, which is okay. So obviously, surface killed me again. Corners 8.5, edges 8.5, centering 9, surface 6. Kind of unfortunate, but it is an old card, so maybe it'll fetch something there. And this is the same name, the same design, different set. This is from 2010 UV's Legendary Collection, limited edition, LCO one Red Ice B Dragon, it came back at a 7.5. So 0.5 better than the last one. It's not going to fetch anywhere close to what the JMP card would have been. The annoying part is you actually had an 8.5 on the surface. But I know, this is weird. The edges were lacking. This is the one card where surface was not the worst one. Corners were 8, surface 8.5, centering 9.5. Edges is what killed us there at a 7, which is unfortunate. Don't worry, guys. We're getting through this. Exodia the Forbidden One. This is one of the newer ones. This comes from Maximum Gold El Dorado, which was the second Maximum Gold set that was released. I had a handful of these ones. I picked the best one that I thought could do well. And we got an 8.5, which is pretty darn good for an Exodia. Also pretty darn good for a gold uh, trimmed card. I was about to say these that. These gold trimmed cards are very, very hard to get graded well, uh, especially if you're in Europe. If you have the Europe print of these, I, I feel sorry for you. That was <laughs> one of the most awful print runs I've ever seen in my life across any card, like collectible card uh, box. Uh, so 8.5 on the Exodia. We had a 8 on the corners. Surface actually pretty good. 8.5. Edges 9. Centering 9.5. I think I'm going to sleeve that one because right. it's Exodia. It's an 8.5. As you wish. Moving right along, we're diving back into some blue eyes. I forget where I got this one, to be honest with you, but it's a 2018 Legendary Collection Kaiba Mega Pack. First edition blue eyes. Shining Dragon. It is not blue eyes white dragon. Don't you ever get that confused. We got an 8, which is pretty darn good. Uh, corners was really, really solid on this one. 9.5. Two 9.5s and you still get an 8. That's so frustrating. Yeah, I, I feel like this should have been bumped up to an 8.5, but... I, I, I'm not a grader, so I can't say with any certainty. Um, obviously, bias point of view. Uh, surface 7.5, centering 9.5, edges 8.5. A little rough there. Would have liked a 0.5 higher, but it's all right. Uh, I remember this one I did buy with the intention to get it graded. This is a 2013 Yu-Gi-Oh! Starter Deck Kaiba Reloaded. Not to be confused with Starter Deck Kaiba, the actual original. This is a first edition print. It is an ultimate rare. Uh, one of the first ultimate rare cards that I've ever had in my possession, which is pretty cool. Blue Eyes White Dragon, we got an 8. 8.5 on the corners, surface 8, edges 8, centering 9.5. Alright, I got three cards left in this stack, and don't worry, there's going to be a little bit more after that. Uh, I actually think these might all be the, the same Blue Eyes card. Take a quick look. Yes. Okay, so you they're all the same ones. Well, yeah, well, here you go. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll just rifle through these ones quick. This one came back at a 7.5, same blue eyes card. Got another one, 
Came back at a seven, same blue eyes card. And this one, same blue eyes card. Came back at a, oh, sorry, this one was actually from a different set. This is from a, a legendary collection, um, but same design. Yeah, this is actually one that was not like the last three, but we got an eight on that one, so that's pretty darn cool. I'm gonna drink some water again, because my voice is hard. All right. His voice is at an 8.5. <clears throat> this is the fun stack. And if you stuck with us this long, then I, I truly appreciate it. It is worth it. May have to split this into two, uh, into two videos. We have an Obelisk of the Tormentor. Premium Gold, first edition from 2014. And this one, I was very excited about this one. I felt like this had a very good chance of getting like a 9, 9.5. And I was correct with this one because it came back at a 9 mint. Corners, 8.5 edges, 9 centering, 9. And this one had a surface grade of 9. Thank the Lord. This one is absolutely getting asleep. And by the way, if you see any cards here that you like, that you want to uh, possibly add to your collection, uh, probably a good chunk of them will be up on our eBay Pack Bros. So take a look there. Or you can message us on Instagram, uh, Official Pack Bros. Maybe we can talk something out. Yeah, I actually prefer um, that. Message us on Official Pack Bros. I'd be more than happy to work a deal around uh, just a direct deal with you guys. That's yeah. much preferred. Just remember we're in Canada, so no cash app. All right, you got to pay Palace. Um, yeah, going through fee bay can be quite an or issue. Or e transfer but... for my fellow Canadians. E transfer is good too. So, this one, Dark Magician from the same set that the Exodia card was from that you saw before. This is Maximum Gold El Dorado. This is the first edition. Very difficult to get good grades with these gold plated cards, but a gold trimmed card gives us a gold plate with a nine grade. Corners 9.5, surface. 8.5 centering nine edges nine very very happy with this one uh this is gonna be hard to let go I'm, i might have to keep yeah, this you can one you see it might be a pc card you can we'll see. see it oh, oh yes oh, <laughs> i'm excited for this one okay crystal clear wing synchro dragon this one comes out of synchro storm or, excuse me legendary duelist synchro storm first edition i bought two of these boxes and I knocked it out of the park with these boxes. They were so sick. This is also the first Ghost Rare that I have ever pulled in my life. Now, if you're a Yu-Gi-Oh collector, you know when you get a Ghost Rare, you can almost guarantee that it's going to suck. You can... It's, <laughs> it's quality. Tell us how you really feel, Chris. It's quality is... Chances are it's going to be very poor. But when I pulled this and I saw it and I looked at it closer, to my surprise, I was like, this is actually in, like pretty good condition like I, I should probably get this graded and i'm very happy i did because it came back at a mint nine corners 9.5 edges 9.5 centering 9.5 the only thing that held us back from a 9.5 grade was surface at an 8.5 but i'm confident that collectors out there will know just how difficult it is to get a good graded ghost rare card so i'm extremely extremely happy with this grade that is absolutely getting a sleeve Next card, going back into the gold trim. We have a Blue-Eyes White Dragon from not Maximum Gold El Dorado, but just Maximum Gold, the first print run of this Maximum Gold series. This one, it, it, it's so beautiful. It's a first edition Blue-Eyes. It is a mint nine, and good God, it is a true nine. We have a nine grade on corners, surface, edges, and centering. Absolutely beautiful. Very happy with this. That's just a nice, I mean, that's that's just a nice, yeah, nice card design. The plate's gold. It, 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 it's just a nice. Everything fits so well together. Very nice. Pure mint card. Absolutely beautiful. Very, very happy with that grade. And we're sticking with gold, guys. I got so much gold here. I should call Harold the jewelry buyer. Harold? Harold, yeah. Is that his name? Yeah. Are you sure? Positive. Is that the cash man? Uh, um, Canadians, let us know. <laughs> uh, um, a 2020 maximum Is gold. it Oliver? You're right, Oliver is the gold guy. I think Harold is the guy that buys your real estate. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Anyways, Red Eyes Black Dragon, not B Dragon, coming from Maximum Gold First Edition. This one also came back with a gold plate. That's because it is a mint nine grade. 9.5 corners, 9.5 edges, centering was a nine, and surface, 8.5. Surface is killing us across the board here with Yu-Gi-Oh, but it's all right because we got a gold plate on a gold card which i will take any day of the week Ooh, 
All right, this one, quite honestly, I don't know why I sent this one. <laughs> I, I can't just particularly remember. I'm, I'm pretty sure I just looked it up on eBay and I saw some no, graded ones I, there. I think I remember. I think you actually handed me that card to sell on our eBay. And when I looked it up, I saw that high graded ones of it were selling oh, for good money. Okay. So I gave it back to you and yep. said you might want to grade this. Okay, one. that's what happened. That was that, that. was the big brother looking out for the little brother moment. Yes. Um, this one came from that collection that I purchased. This is all from that. If you guys are wondering how big that collection was, it was like a full like four row plus some other one rows plus some smaller boxes as well. Um, and this was one of the cards in there. Toon Kingdom coming from the 2015 Dragons of Legend 2 first edition card. This one has a very nice gold plate attached to it. Nine mint corners, 9.5. Service 8.5. Edges 9.5. Centering 9.5. Very, very happy with yeah, that. So for reference, there isn't one sold, but there is a... Well, there's only tens up here right now, and the one ten is listed for three hundred bucks. Oh, that's solid. So that's huge. You're not going to get three hundred for it, but you're getting it more than ten bucks for it. Yeah, it's going to be very nice. Um, and our first actual Dark Magician girl from 2015 Yugi's Legendary Deck First Edition. This one is an ultra rare first edition print of Dark Magician girl, and it came back at a very nice mint nine. Corners, 9.5. Edges, 9. Surface, unfortunately, 8.5. Centering, 9. But it's Dark Magician Girl. It's a 9. It's going to do very, very well. Everybody loves Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl. So somebody will be very happy to add that to their collection. And to match with the girl, we have the guy, Dark Magician again, from 2015 Yugi's Legendary Deck, first edition. I should think that was the same set as that Dark Magician Girl. Um, this one, just like the Dark Magician Girl, came back. At a mint nine corners 9.5 surface 8.5 edges nine centering nine this is like a very uh it's a very weird design for dark magician this is not a it's artwork different. that you would typically see i for think a dark that magician was the card. second artwork that I, if i recall correctly that's the second artwork that I, they ever made that's yeah. probably a remake of it but i'm pretty sure i do believe the it's second one of the dark magician cards i mean that's the that was a design yeah and that is one of the reasons why this one is desirable because it is even though it is a newer type of card the artwork is very og Oh man, and we picked a good one to end it off on. And that's the OG design, by the way. That's the first Dark Magician design in existence. Or at least the one that we know of. No, I, I know for a fact that's the first one. Okay. Well, I remember back in the day. Obviously not the gold version. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dark Magician from Maximum Gold. First edition. This one, I absolutely had to send in. There was no refuting this. It had to go in because I knew it would give me a golden grade. He believed in the heart of the cards. Believed in the heart of the cards, and it returned the favor with a 9.5 gem mint. Dark Magician from Maximum Gold. Corners 9.5, edges 9.5, centering 9.5. And the only thing holding us back from a true 9.5, as we've seen here, Our friend. is the surface. That is the last card that we have here. I actually think they got a bit of dust in the case there, which I'm very upset about. That was it. Those are all of our cards. Uh, overall, I'm very happy with what I got back. Even with some disappointing cards there, in particular the Battle Party Team Dark Magician coming back at a four. <laughs> uh, that one kind of kicked me in the nuts, but um, overall, I, I'm very happy. Very good quality cards that I got back. Sports, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon altogether. Got my first 10s, yep. which is pretty sick. Definitely am going to make some profit on these. Probably going to be a handful that's going to stick into the PC. That's going to be another video that will mm -hmm. be coming eventually. Some PC show-offs and a lot of knowledge that I got from this, which I think was probably the most important part, which is how much information I gathered. Definitely. Definitely. On the note of a PC show off, I've actually been thinking, and I have my Mario Lemieux collection sitting in a bunch of four rows downstairs, and any card that is serial numbered, jerseyed, autoed, whatever, I put in a one touch case. Back when I started the collection in 2012, one touch cases weren't that expensive, but with the rising cost of plastic, it's become apparent to me that I should probably be sleeving the one touch cases themselves. So I am gonna go through my entire collection and sleeve all the one touches. What I thought I would do is share the collection with you guys. So I think what we'll do mm. at some point is we'll go year by year, video by video, cause yep. I have it all sorted by year in alphabetical. And I will make, we'll go through each year, make a video for each year and show you guys what I got. And then once we're all up to speed, I'll show you guys edition videos, maybe once per month and show you what I picked up that month yep. to add to the collection. 
But in any event, this is a long video. Thanks for sticking it out with us, guys. Lots of cards to grade and see and look at. And overall, I think we did great. Let us know below what you think about what we did here. If you're interested in any cards, if you have questions about the process, I think it's the number one question that we get asked by people who are trying to get in. How do I grade a card? What do I do? Where do I go? It's It was confusing for us too. Mm -hmm. And it's a bit of a trusting process and it's a lengthy process, but we're more than happy to help out. So feel free to comment below or reach out to us on Instagram official pack bros anything else from you chris no i'm all good my voice hurts me too see you guys later